The NBA is an 82 game season with for some an even longer postseason. This allows the NBA to be one of if not the most scrutinized league as far as the players go. With 82 games there is so much an opportunity for making mistakes, there's so much opportunity for growth. As journalists and other reporters of the media need headlines to write about when a star or even just a regular player has a poor night or a performance that wasn't up to their standards, it's very easy for them to collect the check and cash in on clicks by just writing about them and their lack of success. Half of the people who watch the game probably take the stance of, well, they're professionals, they're getting paid you know, millions of dollars a year, they are allowed and should hear our negative, uh, negative mindset as when they do good, we praise them. And then there's another half of our group rather of people who probably say, listen, basketball is about growth. Being an athlete is about growth. Some nights are going to be good. You're going to make mistakes. Uh, and some night you're going to hit every single shot you take. All in all, it doesn't really matter which side of the spectrum you fall on. Today's video, we're going to discuss three players who the NBA and NBA media have tried to, for lack of better terms, shit on the last, you know, couple months or years or however long they've been in the NBA and we're just going to talk about how they never quit they continue to persist in their game and how things have been looking up for them recently if you're new here please be sure to consider hitting the subscribe button as we are on the road to 3,000 subscribers and we are uploading every single day for the month of March Without further ado, let's get into the first man on this list, uh, Jalen Brown. And by the way, this whole video is just going to be appreciating these three players. There will be no negative things said about them because the whole point is to just give flowers to people who have been quit on. For Jalen Brown, uh, there was just a lot of discourse last season following the amount of turnovers um, he had in the Eastern Conference Finals and even the Eastern Conference Semifinals. Uh, and then there was the whole thing about him not being a great three-point shooter, and the biggest thing was his left hand. A member of the Celtics Wire, which is a relatively well-known Boston newspaper, uh, put out an article um, in regards to the severity of Jalen Brown's uh, left hand. And one of the little blips in the article uh, said, there would be a not insignificant number of people around the world who would watch a six hour live stream of Jalen Brown being forced to do everything, brushing his teeth, dribbling a basketball, making breakfast, dribbling a basketball, basically just kind of flaming Jalen Brown saying, we would love to watch him try to do everything. And then he keeps sneaking the words, dribbling a basketball with his left hand um, in this uh, article, obviously. But clearly that noise has not gotten a Jalen. If you've watched the Boston Celtics, which I'm sure you have as they are the best team in the NBA uh, record-wise, um, Jalen's been amazing as the second and sometimes even first option. Uh, he's averaging 23 points, shooting 50% from the field, grabbing nearly six boards, a steal, a block, and four assists a night. He has been overly tenacious on defense, which is something the Celtics team desperately needs. As we saw in the postseason, they struggled against guys like James Harden, they struggled against guys like Jimmy Butler, Caleb Martin, a lot of shooting guard-esque, uh, you know, very, very just talented, explosive scorers. Um, they need a perimeter defender like Jalen Brown to step up and be that guy. And with the acquisition of Drew Holiday and Chris Thompson Porzingis, it's obvious that his numbers were going to go down a bit. But what I love is that his efficiency has gone up both in the free throw, field goal, and three point percentage. Jalen Brown's game is just so very unique. He's getting a little bit better as a passer, but that is nowhere near his role on the Boston Celtics. I really do enjoy watching Jalen's game as he is super, super aggressive and very very sneakily athletic i'm not saying that jalen brown was ever in the bottom of the barrel last season he averaged a career high in points as he almost topped 27 guys almost 27 points a game but I'm just giving him his flowers as the media has and always will continue to run with the narrative that he has no left hand and that he's not a great basketball player and that he's not worth the money he makes. Now, is he worth $300 million today? No, maybe not. But in four, five, six years, that's exactly what the market value is going to be for a guy like Jalen Brown. And that's exactly the length of the contract he was signed. Perspective is a big thing when it comes to talking about the finances of basketball, just because of the fact that if you told me or you or whomever watching this video that 10 years ago, uh, in 10 years, a man who's not even the best player on his team was going to make $60 million a year, you would laugh in their face. Guys, Shaquille O'Neal turned down an offer from the Orlando Magic that was $100 million for 12 years. Could you imagine if an NBA player in today's world signed a 12-year contract? That's just not the way of the world. 
And whether Jalen has a predominantly strong left hand or not does, has nothing to do with his ability to be a dominating, great NBA player. I'm very excited to watch this Boston Celtics team suit up. Jalen, there are my flowers for you. The next Jalen is Jalen Green. First 25 games of this season, Jalen Green was averaging around 17 points a game on not the greatest efficiency. The last 25 games of his career since All-Star break about, he's been averaging 21 points, almost six rebounds, almost four assists a night. Including some explosive performances as he had a 36 point double-double against Charlotte in less than 30 minutes. He had a 34 point, 12 rebounds, seven assists outing against the Lakers and a 31 point performance against the New Orleans Pelicans. And not to mention the Rockets have won the last five of their games and are sneakily getting pretty close to that 10 seed. If they knock the Lakers out of the play and who are on a two game losing streak, that would be absolutely hilarious. All in all, I love Jalen Green's game. He's very, very athletic. Um, oftentimes, I believe that he is a mixture of a point guard and a shooting guard. A lot of Rockets fans are not very pleased with the way I talk about the Houston Rockets, even though I give them praise. I don't know, guys. I make mistakes on these channels because I'm a human being. And a lot of the diehard fans for the specific teams I'm talking about want my head on a pitchfork. Nonetheless, Jalen Green has been uh, really just growing um, as a ball handler that's predominantly in charge of the offense uh, with Kevin Porter not being around anymore with Fred Van Fleet and Dylan Brooks in and out of the lineup uh, we've seen a lot of Jalen Green learning to snake better in the pick and roll we've seen him dive at the basket a little bit better all in all I would just like to see Jalen Green improve um, uh, defensively you know someone that big he definitely and someone that laterally quick he shows a lot of potential um, I'm just sure that the effort is not exactly there uh, as we see, he is just trying to grow into whatever he is, a shooting guard, a point guard. Uh, with Fred Van Fleet, obviously there's championship experience in that locker room, in that backcourt. Uh, I am a big fan of Houston, and I feel like Texas is a very big and successful basketball state. And it does surprise me how little they're spoken of in the mainstream media. So I thought I'd give some love to Jalen. Last guy we're going to talk about is Colin Sexton. Colin, in 25 minutes a night, is averaging 18 points, shooting 41% from three-point land, and averaging five assists a night, guys. To me, Colin Sexton really does remind me of Isaiah Thomas. Um, not only does the way he plays with heart over height remind me of it, but even just with the whole Cleveland thing where um, the, you know Isaiah gets hurt or Colin gets hurt, and then they're... You know, teams that drafted him, or I guess the Celtics didn't draft Isaiah, but um, the point is they trade him when he's hurt and they kind of forget about him. One to 24 point per game score is now a member of the Utah Jazz just because they had the opportunity to get down to Mitchell. I'm not saying Sexland, you know, Darius and um, Colin. I'm not saying they would have, uh, you know, went far or they could have been the cornerstone of the Cavs, but it does, it just does suck to see stuff like that. Colin plays with so much energy on offense and defense. He never takes possessions off. And what I love about him for an undersized guard is he does a great job utilizing his body and just bumping into people and trying to draw contact. I feel like with newer age point guards, they're so scared of the physical nature, whereas Colin is kind of like the last of a dying breed. But what do you guys make of this video if you made it this far i appreciate your support as always hope you all have a great rest of your day stay happy health and blessed peace